What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you how I went about making the proxies that I ordered off at of MPC that you saw in my previous review video. First off we're going to go to any type of deck website or uh, you could even enter it manually if you want to but we're going to be getting the list for the deck and then we're going to go about copying it. And then we're going to be pasting it into a website called MPC Fill. And once we get everything copied and pasted over into there, then we can go and hit submit. But first, you want to make sure that all of these Fs are erased if they exist on your list at all. Because that's just going to end up confusing the website and making it think that, it, that you entered the card name wrong. And it's going to be like, what's this? So once you get your list all set up, then you're going to hit submit. It's going to load up all of the cards and all of the known alters that the website has access to. So then you want to click on these one out of whatever number. And that's going to show you an example of all of the different alters that are available. So obviously this one's probably the one that I'd say looks the best. So we're going to pick that, you know, go through here, pick whatever you think looks nice and whatever you want in your deck. And the cool thing about this is that it's going to allow you to be able to sort of like theme your deck if you want to. Like for my mutate deck, I like to stick to a little bit of like a weird Japanese theme for some unknown reason. So I like this style of art for all of my fetch lands and things like that. And so once you go ahead and you got all of your fronts picked out, you can decide on what back you want. Only certain backs will work with MPC Phil because MPC will, Phil has a big copyright um, thing. So like they don't want you to use any type of copyrighted material. You know, that is at least obviously copyrighted. Like something like this maybe. Or... I don't know, a lot of these work. This one I know doesn't work because I've tried it before because it has the whole Magic the Gathering logo. So I normally just stick to this one. I think that it comes out good. And you're not even gonna see the back of these anyway once you sleeve them. So it kinda doesn't really matter. So once you got all that picked out, you're going ahead and hit download all images. I'm not gonna do that because that's going to you know open up all the tabs and things, but it w it's only natural for it to open up a whole lot of tabs, you know, a hundred or so because you have about a hundred cards in here. And so it's gonna download every single image for every single card that you picked. And once that happens, I recommend going into your downloads and putting them all into one file so they're all sorted in one place. It just helps keep organized. And if you have any cards that, say for instance, like this Bellowing Aegisaur that has no cool alters, this is where I'm going to take a little detour and show you how I make my own alters if I, you know, cannot, for whatever reason, find one because it's an underplayed card like this or something, or if I just want something that's a little more personalized. So for that, I'm going to go on a card conjurer. And for this example, we're going to use the new Azorius Commander Shorakai. You want to go on to import and enter the card name of the card that you want and this is going to go ahead and it's going to grab all of the information off a of scryfall so you go and enter the card and see it brings up all the text and mana symbols and set symbols and whatnot that's going to go with that card and then you can go and you can pick your own frame i like to stick to the what is that i like to go to showcase frames i want to say and then you can scroll down and pick borderless. This is what I personally like to use, but you can obviously go through all these and make those decisions for yourself. So I like the borderless, so I'm gonna add that frame. And then because it has a power and toughness, I'm gonna put the power and toughness and add that to the card frame. I'm not gonna go in too in depth with this whole tutorial on this website. If you want, I can make a separate tutorial showing how to make some super awesome alters with this. This is just meant to be a quick rundown. And then say you want to obviously change the art. That's the whole reason you're here in the first place. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to grab the art that I want to use. All right, there's the art. And so you wanna stay here on this art tab and you can scale it. This is going to be your scale. This is your Y and this is your X. You can actually just move it around freely by grabbing it. 
and if you want to scale it you can go here and change the number I'm gonna change it up to 300 that way it can fill out the whole card and then I'm just gonna drag it to where I think it looks right if I want to I can change the scale but this isn't really something I'm going to personally use so we'll just call it good like that then once you're happy with it then you want to go here and hit download your card once you download your card now you have that image of that but you're not done here yet because when you go on to make playing cards make playing cards is going to automatically crop off the tops and the sides of it so you need a little bit extra room over there in order for it to not make it too small so you're going to want to go ahead and you can open up one of those images that you downloaded with the mpc fill and so once you got that we'll go with this pick that now once you got that open then you can go ahead and paste in your new image so we're going to paste in the new image and then we're going to properly size it and center it to the best of our ability and once we got it nice and centered we can zoom in a little bit use the paint bucket and make sure it's on black so that way you can cut out these corners and this if you want to I've never had a problem with just leaving the Wizards of the Coast trademark thing there. They've never kicked back my orders or anything. But if you're worried about that happening, what you can go ahead and do is go ahead and make a rectangle, a solid black rectangle, and put it over it. And now all that's gone. Then once you're all happy with it, you're going to go ahead, hit save as. You don't have to worry about getting rid of whatever card image you used as a reference because you're going to save this as and make a totally separate uh, image file. So you don't, you still are going to keep your original one. And once all that's done, you're going to go ahead and now you finally got all your images together and you're going to go on uh, make playing cards. Then you're going to go and hit game cards. Once you've hit game cards, you're going to scroll down until you find custom game cards 63 by 88 millimeter start your order with that I stick to the uh, standard smooth card sock some people swear by superior smooth but I say standard smooth is good enough and here's your size of your deck now what I usually do just to kind of make it more worth the shipping cost I usually go up to 216 cards and do two decks together and throw in a little extras like tokens and stuff like that or you could even just go up even further from that if you want to. You can go up as high as 612 and do six decks if you'd like. But it's just my recommendation. And <clears throat> then keep full color print. Keep NPC game card finish. Shrink wrap packaging is good in my opinion. Because the uh, you'll see that there's all these different boxes and things like that. It's going to come in a box no matter what the cardboard box that you saw in my review video and then the shrink wrap is just going to be wrapped around the cards to keep them together <clears throat> booklet doesn't matter start your design we're going to hit different images unless you you know are just printing all rat colonies or something like that <laughs> otherwise pick different images now this is the part that takes a long time you're going to upload images and you're going to pick all of the folder that I told you to put all of your images into we're only just going to use you know two for this because I don't want this to you know have to all be cut out and be ridiculous because this whole upload image process actually does take quite a bit of time and you probably have time to just go watch a TV show or something like that while you wait but I recommend checking on it every now and then because sometimes the uploading can mess up and it'll get stuck and you'd hate to be go do something for an hour and come back and it's not done because it had a hiccup all right now that we got our images uploaded we're going to go ahead and drag and drop them into here um, you can use the autofill images feature but the issue with that is that for your basic lands it'll only put one copy of your basic lands in so you'll have to remember to go back and put the other copies of your basic lands in if they all have the same art and then now i just have valakut over here because I wanted to give an example on how to make MBFCs. And you can see if you go and click edit, how it'll actually, like I said, it'll crop off all that black part and it won't, ex if you try to use the image without putting that black part, it'll just look zoomed in and your 
text box will be going all the way to the edge and things like that. So it's better to do like I showed before. And then here you can go ahead and adjust it accordingly and whatnot. Hit apply. So now that we got our images in for the fronts, we're going to go forward and it's going to ask if we want to add text to the front. Our cards should already have all of the text that we want them to have. So you should be able to just skip right by that. Then we're going to go ahead and go to the backs. We're going to say different images because we have MDFCs. And then we're going to go ahead and go get the backs for the cards. We're going to use the back that I showed you along with Valakut. Oh, I made it have a seizure or something. Okay, this is new. I haven't seen this happen before. Go ahead and exit out of that. Now when you now when you go ahead and put the uh, card backs on, you're gonna want to make sure that you put the if you're using MDFCs, you're gonna want to make sure that you put the correct back on the correct card. So you'll see them labeled as one, two, three, four, five. When you put them on the front, just take note of what number is an MDFC and which MD, MDFC it is, so that way you can put the correct backing on it. Otherwise, you'll end up with some weird situation where you have a MDFC on the back of a normal card or something like that, or they're all mismatched. And yeah, and then you'll go through and you'll have to put the backs on all the normal cards by hand, one by one. And then you're going to move on to the next step where it's going to ask you if you want to add text to the back. You're probably not going to want to waste time doing this, but if you wanted to, you could write like, this is a proxy, not a real magic card or something along those lines. So we're going to skip ahead to the next step, which is previewing and adding it to cart. The preview is going to show you the fronts and the backs together. So this is where you're going to get to double check your work and make sure that you have your MDFCs properly lined up with the correct fronts and backs, which we do. It'd be kind of sad if we didn't. <laughs> and then you're going to scroll all the way down. Once it's all good and you know it's all good, you're going to hit add to cart. And then once it's added to the cart, you just put in your payment information and all that. You know, it's a good website and you can trust it. <laughs> I've used it a lot. And then you're just going to order your cards and wait. It can take a little bit of time now to actually get them because you got to remember they're going to have to print off every single card and package it and whatnot, which takes a little bit of time. So you should expect to have them with in your hands within about two weeks from whenever you order. Unless you order on a weekend or a Friday night or something like that, which will add a little bit of time because it goes by business days. Anyway, that's all for my video. I hope you found this informative. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out.